It was an amazing moment in the Oval Office today when pop culture icon, rapper extraordinaire, Kanye West met with President Trump before the cameras. He unleashed a 10-minute monologue where he tried to explain his love of all things MAGA. You know, people expect that if you're black, you have to be Democrat. You know, they try to scare me to not wear this hat, my own friends. But this hat, it gives me, it gives me power in a way. You know, my dad and my mom separated, so I didn't have a lot of male energy in my home. There was something about when I put this hat on, it made me feel like Superman. Like, what I, what I need Saturday Night Live to improve on, or what I need the liberals to improve on is, if he don't look good, we don't look good. This is our president. He has to be the freshest, the flyest. Sometimes unlikely figures emerge in American history to play important roles, illuminating at times important truths. And today, Kanye West, in his own eccentric way, exposed the intolerance of the left. Their denunciations of his White House appearance were immediate and withering. When it comes to issues of Kanye West bringing black people to uh, President Trump, that is, that's a misnomer. It certainly doesn't speak to the diversity and sort of broad experiences of 40 million uh, black people. Eat. Well, this is a reality TV show we were watching. I mean, it, it was sad. Yeah. Because that was an assault on our White House. An assault on our White House. Well, Kanye did use some coarse language that he shouldn't have used. But in other settings, liberals would have called that authentic. He was being his true self, speaking his own truth. But if you want to talk about assaults or improprieties in, in the White House, how about this? Or this? Kanye West is hardly a political philosopher, and I've always believed that entertainers should first entertain and keep their politics separate from their art. But I cannot remember any artist on the left who is treated with the same vitriol and hatred as Kanye West has been subjected to since he announced his support for the president. When Katy Perry or Miley Cyrus were headlining Hillary Clinton rallies, running through dorms to register voters, I don't remember anyone at MSNBC or CNN criticizing them for lacking policy experience. Or how about when Hillary Clinton sat down for an interview with that probing policy maven, Mary J. Blige? It ain't no secret, no secret, my friend. You can get killed just for living in your American skin. Oh. It's like an old coffee commercial from the 70s. Uh, and remember, Obama was the biggest celebrity hound of them all. I mean, A's relationship uh, was mutual with the celebrities. He was kind of a celebrity, and they loved him as vice versa. Here's Barack and Michelle serenading Usher in the White House, but no impropriety or assault on the White House then. And how about Beyonce and Jay-Z? They were in and out of the Obama White House more frequently than the Secret Service. That was all perfectly acceptable. No policy concerns then. But when it was announced two days back that Kanye would be holding a meeting with Trump at the White House, all hell broke loose. So Kanye's going to let the president use him again. He's, he's the token Negro of the, of the Trump administration. Kanye West is what happens when Negroes don't read. And black folks are about to you know, trade Kanye West in the racial draft, okay? Kanye is being subjected to the attacks that awake any black conservative who dares to break ranks with the Democratic monolith. Liberals kind of treat these entertainers like pawns who are not allowed to deviate from the leftist groupthink at all. God protect any Hispanic, gay, or black who breaks ranks and goes their own way politically. Remember the scorn that singer Harry Belafonte and the civil rights activist Harry Belafonte heaped on Condoleezza Rice and Colin Powell for working for George Bush? Condoleezza Rice and Colin Powell served Bush because they believe as he does. They embrace his ideology. They embrace his imperial appetite. They are lackeys and tools of, uh, of that. And my reference to them as uh, failed house slaves meant that they were not the masters of their own destiny, although they had the choice to be and didn't. House slaves, that was really nice. 
More than 30 years ago, a prominent figure in the Reagan administration argued that blacks should cast off liberalism for conservative solutions and summed up how the GOP had lost so much ground. Saying Democrats smugly assume blacks are monolithic and will, by force of circumstances, always huddle to the left of the political spectrum. The political right watches this herd mentality in action, concedes that blacks are monolithic, picks up a few dissidents, and wistfully shrugs at the seemingly unbreakable hold of the liberal left on black Americans. That official's name was Clarence Thomas, then chair of the Equal Opportunity Commission. Individuals such as the brilliant conservative economist Tom Sowell were courageous because, as Thomas noted, they refused to give in to the cult mentality and childish obedience that hypnotized black Americans into mindless political trance. This is Justice Thomas in 2007. We're here not to be proselytized, but to think for ourselves. And at bottom, isn't that why we, one of the reasons we love a free society, that we get to think for ourselves, make our decisions based on certain principles? and to make it possible for others to do the same. Absolutely. Now, I'm not going to say that rapper Kanye West is Tom Sowell or Clarence Thomas. Of course, he's not. But I will say that unless he's doing a giant punking of America, he has guts and gusto. Just because he dares to think for himself, think differently, in his outspoken, over-the-top manner, He's pilloried by the politically correct performers in politics, in journalism, and, of course, in the entertainment industry. He represents a danger to the left because of his huge cultural influence. And moments like this are absolutely intolerable and frightening to liberals. Yes, you know I love you. I know. Did, did I, did but I don't want to take. I don't want to put you in that spot. But. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm standing in that spot. I love this guy right here. Let me get this guy. <laughs> I love this guy right here. Yeah, come yeah. here. Yes. Could it be that the Trump West show was an indication that the old Democrats' monopoly on black voters is in jeopardy? There is more reasons for the liberals to be concerned. The president's support among African Americans is nearly double that of last year. In the latest Rasmussen poll, President Trump now has a 36 approval rating among African Americans. Some attributed the rise to the support from Kanye West and, of course, a historic low unemployment rate in the black community. Whatever the cause, whatever the reason, the shifting support among African Americans is very, very significant. Democrats cannot win a national election without their huge swath of black voters. And perhaps Kanye is giving them a reason to look elsewhere for political answers. So next time you hear liberal pundits writing him off as a crazy, slave-denying lunatic, remember, it's all about the numbers. They have to smear West for fear that black Americans will follow him into the arms of President Donald Trump. And what are the Democrats going to do then? And that's the angle.